Hello ladies and welcome back to Chengiz World. Yes, it's on and popping. Today is Women Ask Wednesday. Yeah, 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 yeah. My favorite segment ever because I get to answer your questions. Keep them coming, people. Keep them coming. Okie dokie. So today I am going to answer uh, two questions in one go because there are questions I get a lot in general and I don't have a heck of a lot to say around one or the other. So we're just going to kill two birds with one stone today so that we can get through as many questions as possible. But do keep sending your questions, ladies. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome to Chengi's World. Oh yes, it's on and popping. I am Chengi and you, my darling, are my world. Make sure you join me on Instagram and Facebook at Chengi's World and become part of that world too. And we can continue to discuss because I'm going to give you some inspiration. I'm going to give you some direction. I'm going to give you some love doctor advice on there on a daily basis. We'll do a bit of fashion, a bit of makeup, a bit of style. What can I say? It's all happening in Chengi's World. Okay, so the first question that I'm going to answer today comes from Anna and Anna wants to know have do I happen to have do you happen to have experience with American men I have a feeling they're a different breed um, I just can't read them <laughs> okay so I love this question and the reason I chose it is because I get this a lot it's not necessarily just American men a lot of women all over the world um, always give me the excuses of, but I am in Africa and men here are different. And I'm in, I'm in China and the men here are different. And I am here and all the men are different. Do I have experience uh, with American men? Yes, um, I do. Um, I do in terms of clients that are American. Yes. And in my uh, sort of teens... Um, I, I used to meet a lot of Americans and had dealings with them, whatever you want to call that. I don't know. I don't know if I dated one or not, but I had um, dates, I guess. I don't know. But American, not American, English, whatever. Okay. Men are men. I know it sounds generalistic. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not naive. I know that every country, every continent has its own set of dynamics. Okay, so for instance, growing up in Zimbabwe as a woman, I didn't have to worry about men approaching me or who do, who approaches who because African men in Zimbabwe, they're not backwards and coming forwards, baby. They're like, girl, I, they're like, what? They're on it. Okay, so as a woman in Africa, the idea of approaching a man never really used to cross my mind. I don't know if things have changed now because I haven't lived in Africa for quite a, a while, but certainly growing up, it was always me. A woman always is the one in a choosing position. She's always the one, you know, men there are never that shy. However, even in Africa, there were guys who, who were shy and, and, you know, who would, but they always find a way to get that message across to you. They always find a way to, to reach you with, with your message. So there's that cultural dynamic that I guess a woman in England will never experience. And a woman in is always like, please God, <laughs> make them go away. Okay. So every culture has its own dynamics. So here's what I wanted to say is that the bottom line is, so indeed, um, different men from different cultures will have a different approach. They will have a different way of approaching a woman. They'll have a different way of conducting relationships. They will have a different way of communicating. They will have a different way of, of showing their love, um, you know, in one way, shape or the other, some men, uh, you know, certainly I know with African guys, you know, in general, they, they, they do really do take the time to look after their women and, and make sure that, you know, the, the woman's hair is done and, and they take pride in, in, in taking care of, of their woman's sort of whole kind of, uh, yeah, I'll pay for your hair to get done and I'll do this. And there's some cultures where I'm not like, your hair's not my business. Okay. But I will make sure this, but here's the thing. Black, white, yellow, orange, purple, whichever way you look at it. When I say men are men, a man from whatever culture, whatever tribe, whatever tongue, 
a good one is going to provide, protect, and cherish. He's going to have that God-given intuition and in instinct to provide. To pro he might not provide your hair. He might provide your food or whatever. But a good man, a man who wants to be in a relationship with you, regardless of what culture he comes from, will make it absolutely and abundantly clear. He will be present. He won't play games. He will be front and center. He will learn all he can about you. He will make the effort. And sometimes we make excuses for guys who are not making the effort. We make excuses for guys who are playing hot and cold because maybe we have cultural differences. Cultural differences are for real. They're not something that I am trivializing. But at the end of the day, when a man wants you, it doesn't matter what culture he's from. It doesn't matter if he's American or English, Chinese, whatever. If he wants you, he is going to pursue you. He's going to do it relentlessly. He's going to do it consistently. He's going to do it in such a way that you will know that this man wants me. Okay. Because it is in a man's nature, in masculine nature, in a man's masculine nature to pursue the thing that he wants. Okay. It's not, oh, you know, they're bitch. even the shyest guy in a culture where men are so afraid and have anxiety, um, approach anxiety. Even he will find a way to get the message to you. And when he finds a way, he will remain consistent in that way and he will communicate himself. So there will always be that commitment, that consistency and that communication regardless of the culture and, and across the borders that you're in. So if you are finding yourself confused, don't put it down to the fact that they're American. Don't put it down to the fact that they're, they're just not committed to being with you this particular guy or these particular guys that you're meeting happen to be american but it doesn't mean that they are committed that they that the americanism is therefore a problem in terms of their relationship with you okay so a good man knows to provide to protect and to cherish his woman for his for her feelings and he also and a man who really wants you will take care of the three c's that is your commitment that he will show you commitment, that he will communicate with you, and he'll be consistent. Those three will always be part of the package, regardless of culture. If you give a man standards, regardless of culture, he will meet them. Even if they're foreign to, to, to his ways. Women who, you know, who come from cultures like my own, where men pay dowries and they don't pay dowries, will pay the dowry. Because that is a standard, that is what it takes to have you. So... Men will, will, will do what it takes to have a, a, a woman. So don't ever think, oh, he's acting this way because, you know, maybe he's, he's American or he's Chinese or whatever. Okay. So I hope that settles that. Um, okay. So, so fundamentally, um, masculine energy behaves a certain kind of way. If it's interested and feminine energy will always behave a certain kind of way. If it is interested, a woman that is interested in a man, really, really likes a man will naturally find herself submitting to that guy. Is, is, is an, or being receptive to, to that man. That receptivity is, comes as part of our feminine energy when we are open to the advances that we're receiving, regardless of whatever culture, tribe, tongue that we come from. Okay, so hopefully that answers your question, my lovely. The second question is, why do I attract the men I don't want <laughs> and repel the ones I do? I get this question quite a lot. Okay, so we're going to go with, through this hopefully quite quickly number one are you really attracting the men you don't want okay sometimes we are attracting the men that we want we just it's just because we haven't sat down to diagnose what we want if you want nothing you'll get everything if you have no standards if you have no desire if you have no prospect for what you want if you're not clear about what you want then what will happen is God will throw everything at, not God, but the system that God has put in place that some people call the universe will throw anything and everything at you. Okay. So are you clear about what you want? Because if your frequency is broadcasting or you get a, you know, when you don't have a clear frequency, you will not attract what you want. So that's the first thing is most women. If I say, what do you want? You're 
it shouldn't be something that's just coming off well a nice guy who's kind of got money and kind of it should be clear that you want a man who um is you know works out uh who who takes care of himself a man who can provide a man who can provide protection and a man who can cherish you a man that's consistent you know what is it that you want and furthermore you know, you know, are you clear about that? Are you clear about what you can offer a man? Are you clear about the value that you can provide in a relationship? Okay, because that's also part of how the cookie crumbles. Okay, the second thing is every woman on the face of the earth attracts men that she doesn't want. Okay, because whenever your net, if you throw any fisherman that throws his net into the, into the sea, is going to come out with a little bit of rubbish as well. Uh, I don't like to call people rubbish or men rubbish but the point i'm making is don't feel any kind of way when low value men because some men are low value i <laughs> we've all had that situation with a guy where you think really like for real you like really okay we've all had that guy where you think well <laughs> but those guys usually are used to rejection. They play the numbers game. They will try with anybody. And you shouldn't feel any kind of way about that. You shouldn't let that be, oh, I, oh the, 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 the bold ones are always the ones that nobody wants, okay? Um, these guys play the numbers game. And no matter how amazing, high value you are, no matter how clear you are about the man that you want, some guy is just going to be like, Psh you know, she's going to be like, try their luck with you. Okay. It happens to every woman. Don't take it personally and receive it as a compliment and handle your business, girl. Just let that boy know in that kind of party. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes. Okay. And another thing is what has this began to create in terms of your belief systems? I cannot harp on more about the things that are going on in our heads and in our hearts being more important than the things that are happening externally, okay? We are calling into our lives the things that are happening in the invisible, unseen realm, okay? Uh, the things that are happening in the intangible realm, we call them into our natural space. So if you find that it's consistent that the guys that you don't want run off, then the, the, the guys that you want, you are not attracting them to yourself. Then it's about your belief system. Do you feel worthy? Do you feel that you deserve to have that guy? Because you are probably sending out a frequency. You're probably broadcasting to that other guy that you're repelling him. Now, people will say to you, oh, it's because of the way your face looks and you always look like you're upset or whatever. But like I've always said, the face and everything else that's coming out is again... If, why is your face looking that kind of way when a man that you want comes along? Is it because you don't believe you do deserve it? A lot of women don't believe they deserve the things and the men that they want. Um, a lot of women don't believe that they can have a man who is high value, a man who has worked on himself, a man who, who, who every woman wants. Uh, they genuinely don't believe it. So they kind of feel like, you know, am I worthy? And when you start to have that mindset, when you start to play with that way of thinking in your head, am I worthy? Can I really have the love of such a man? Then you've already lost that plot. So you, you will send out a frequency and that frequency will play stuff out in your face, in your body language, in your demeanor, because the, our thoughts, our beliefs affects our thoughts and our, our thoughts affects our performance, our outcomes, our outwardness. Okay. So you are showing up in a way that rejects the thing that you want. Your, your body language, your emissions are rejecting the thing that you want because you have to ask yourself, do you feel unworthy of the love of, of this guy? Do you feel that, what is it that, that makes you feel that you're pushing him away because there's something, there's a love block there that that, that is in the way. So we're going to talk about love blocks um, on another video. If you want me to talk about love blocks, make sure you, you, you put a comment below so that I know that it's a topic that you guys really want to know and, and hear about. So, you know, you, you're carrying a love block. Fourth, uh, fourth thing is if you're a very attractive woman, um, which all of you, my precious angels are, <laughs> yes, as you are all very attractive women and beautiful and stunning human beings, there's very much the possibility that men in general who are high value or men who 
who are sensible or men who are uh they also have the insecurities and when a man is looking at a woman that most men would be interested in or look at a woman that most men would 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 kill to be with um he is gonna feel some kind of way about making that approach and that's where i talk about um, you know, we can talk about how to, to open that door for that guy. So uh, again, if you want me to do a video on how to, to, to make yourself uh, open to, 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 to make it easy for him, because at this point you need to recognize that actually he's just intimidated by, you know, guys that I think that have that, they, they weigh things up. Um, I remember uh, dating um, this guy who was a millionaire and he said to me, look, I couldn't even talk to you because I just thought that girl only deals with billionaires. Okay. In his head, a girl like me only has time for billionaires. Okay. So that, that was a telltale in his mindset that when he looks at me, he, he examines himself. And most guys that think, think, can I talk to a girl like that? Now, everybody who knows me knows I'm for real. Like I'm down to earth and none of this matters. It's all nonsense. But I, I, I was aware from what he said that actually there is a mindset that men have that they look at a woman and they think, is she in my league? So if you happen to fall in the category and when I saw the picture, because this person contacted me via Facebook, look at your picture, you're stunning. And I can imagine that you can't afford to sort of be passive when you see a guy that you like, you're going to have to help him along. You're going to have to throw him a lifeline. And there's a way that, that you can do that. And we can talk about that in the other video. So those are the four reasons that maybe you want to examine yourself. So I hope this answers your question. Thank you so much, ladies, for writing to me. Keep them coming. I hope this really was helpful for both of these questions. If any one of you fall into those categories, I really hope this was helpful. So thank you so much for watching. Take care of you. Love you lots. See you on Instagram and Facebook. And don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Love you lots. Bye-bye now.